you don't know, you damn well should know. My name is Rag Reynolds. This doesn't feel right. I'm not. Where am I? This isn't my channel. My lord. I'm on the Josh Show, aren't I? What am I doing on that loser's channel? Hey, hey Danny, I'm on the Josh Show. <laughs> Why am I on that bum's channel? I don't quite understand. I'm done. Today we're gonna talk about food. A lot of it. We normally consume food to provide nutritional support uh, for our organs to survive. But we made the food so delicious that we cannot stop eating it. The food industry is like a religious sect. And that's the only term that I could think of because uh, like any other religious sect, they know they are feeding us crap. They also have lobbies uh, to make sure that they can uh, keep feeding us crap. And they even have uh, something they call uh, the Holy Trinity. Salt, sugar and fat. Three things that Mother Nature never meant to combine for good reasons. Because when they're put together, they become as addictive as any other drug. And the food industry hates that word. In fact, when it comes to marketing, uh, words like addiction, cravings, dependency, enslavement are banned. So, first we have salt. Uh, manufacturers uh, use salt uh, to give a little bit of flavor and disguise the icky taste of the preservatives that keep processed food fresh for months or even years. Next we have fat. Uh, that produces a powerful sensation they call a mouthfeel. It basically sends a strong pleasure signal to the reward part of the brain. And then uh, we have sugar that literally kills your liver just like alcohol does but who cares? It's sweet, we love it, and it's added everywhere. And like fat and salt, too much or too little, and your brain will not like what you're eating. So they bring scientists to calculate just the right amount to make sure that you keep eating. They call that the bliss point. The perfect spot where your body craves more without registering that you're full. And you can find sugar virtually everywhere, from uh, cakes, obviously, to tomato sauce, uh, pizza, bread, cold sugar, frozen sugar, morning candies, liquid candies with uh, water and bubbles and drinkable jelly beans. Oh, by the way, Tic Tac Mints do contain sugar. However, since the amount of sugar per serving one mint is less than 0.5 grams, the FDA, uh, which doesn't work for you, allows companies to claim that their sweets are sugar free, but they're still candies made of sugar. Escaping from sugar when you eat processed food is impossible. Just like vegan games. Vegan and oxygen deficient super villa mega mind that behaves like an animal rights activist, yet uses uh, plastic plastic bags, cars, motorbikes, sugar itself, condoms, nail polish, crayons, perfumes, all products that contain animal parts. Because no matter how much you try, unless you make things yourself, there is no way out. But fullness is not the only thing scientists have uh, messed up with. Their ultimate goal is to engineer a sensory experience that will literally flood your brain with pleasure. They know everything. They know what color is best for their packaging. They can simulate a taste uh, with chemicals without yeah. using that specific ingredient. Ingredients. And they even know that chocolate with sharp edges is not something our mouths uh, like. Everything to make sure you keep eating. And the food industry bases this study on a phenomenon called the vanishing caloric density, perfected by Cheetos. When Cheetos melt in your mouth, they fool your brain into thinking the food, uh, its calories, uh, have disappeared. As if you didn't eat enough. Meaning that your brain has no reasons to tell your body to stop eating. And they've been knowing about the relation between uh, junk food, obesity and sugar for years. How many? A hundred years. They've started working charts uh, in, the in the 19th century and watched us getting fat. But this is not just their fault, because we go to the shop to buy Cheetos. And this brings us to Amberlynn Reed, content-wise, the opposite of Somalia. Amberlynn Reed is essentially a weight gain vlog channel that shows how to morbidly obese lesbians and chew food. Now, I know that she has just started a, her uh, self-made diet and she's working out. And in this video, I'll explain you why I think this is not going to last. And I might be wrong. I've been wrong a thousand times, but I have nothing to do all day. So, I'm gonna waste your time. So, where do we start? Let's start with the Shrimp Gate, a scandal with all the ramification of a perfect comedy movie where the main character turns her life around and becomes a model with none of that. Because all the people involved in this cheap B movie are 
bad at everything and keep making the same stupid mistakes. Like the bold and the beautiful, uh, Amberlynn Reed is YouTube's Ridge Forrester. Ridge was engaged to Carolyn, but before the marriage he kisses Alex. Carolyn, in the meantime, ends up in the arms of Thorns, uh, Ridge's brother, and marries him. So Ridge hooks up with Brooke and they get together. But during a party, drunk Caroline mistakes Ridge for his brother Thorn, makes love to him, Thorn and Caroline divorce, and Thorn shoots Ridge, who has been brainwashed by his mother until he leaves Brooke, to end up marrying his brother's wife, Carolyn, who dies of leukemia and falls in love with Dr. Taylor, who was treating Carolyn. They make love, uh, but soon after, excited by his fashion company, Ridge decides to make love to Brooke, who is now his father's wife. And this keeps happening all the time! So, to understand Amberlynn, you need to picture Amberlynn as Ridge Forrester, and all the other characters has food. Because no matter how much she tries to commit to a diet, she always ends up making love to burritos, pizzas and Cheetos. So, to give you an idea of uh, how many Cheetos, burritos and pizzas Amberlynn dated so far in our imaginary uh, culinary telenovelas, this is Amberlynn in 2013. And this is Lat Amberlynn. And given the exhausting pace of these telenovelas, today we'll try to answer two simple yet very important questions. How much fucking does she do and who does she do it with? <laughs> Let's begin with uh, question number one. How much fucking does Amberlynn really do? But to answer this question, we'll need to talk first about mukbangs. Basically, the gastronomical version of a gangbang. You eat as many burritos and drink as much coke as you can. Mukbangs are online broadcasting shows in which the host eats uh, large amounts of food while interacting with the audience. I'm not sure whether that was a way to troll uh, the, the well-known abundance of uh, food in Africa, because they were first launched in a South Korean uh, broadcasting channel uh, named, and I'm not kidding here, Africa. So Amberlynn's first mukbang video was filmed in uh, May 2016. And the video was titled Mukbang Eat With Me Spicy. And uh, what did she eat to celebrate uh, her first uh, mukbang video? Two burritos, 250 grams of Cheetos, although she explains that she eats uh, the bigger pack, 200 grams of dark chocolate uh, as a dessert, and of course a diet Pepsi because she's dieting. A meal she refers as uh, hashtag living a poor life. And the cute thing about that video is that she explained that in mukbang videos most of the comments are positive and this is very cute because she thought that would have happened to her as well. So we went to check out the mukbang video comments and found this. I saw this thing called mukbang, the beginning of an era. Is anyone else having a marathon of overheating shows? Ha 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 ha. I have no one to look good naked for anyways. Girl, look good for yourself. Who else is watching in 2018? While in Amberlynn's first mukbang video we found this. No meaning to hate, but I've never seen anyone eat a burrito with a spoon. <laughs> Name a more iconic thumbnail. When you lose your breath from literally just eating. How effing depressing, Jesus. You have an obsessive compulsive eating. A hundred more pounds and you won't be able to walk. I see the way you look at food. My brother had the same issue at 505 pounds. He had the gastric sleeve. They removed the part of his stomach that shoots out hunger signals. Now, 180 pounds lighter in eight months, he doesn't even think of food. Save yourself, you are too young. I'm trying to lose weight right now, okay guys? It's a burrito, Cheetos and a Diet Pepsi? Yeah, okay, Amber. And in the video, she does what she's supposed to do. She eats two burritos with a spoon. And she says, um, I don't have any plastic forks and I always, I, I like can't eat with my fingers. It's like so weird, but I'm trying right now, as you can tell. Like, if I'm having french fries, I'll use a fork. <sighs> like the only thing I will really like use my fingers with, like without even second guessing. It's like chips, candy, that's about it. But like, I'll use a fork when I eat pizza. <sighs> mm -hmm. Weird, I know. So, she claims uh, she eats with fork, uh, french fries and pizza. And guess what? We checked! And that's a lie. In fact, we couldn't find any footage of Amberlynn eating french fries on pizza with forks. Uh, look, a McDonald's french fries, mukbang pizza, Pizza Hut, another pizza video, which isn't a big deal for me. I think these are just uh, white little eyes uh, she 
uses to decorate her live streams. But when we talk about Amberlynn Reed, we cannot not talk about her lies, which is an essential ingredient in her character. In fact, if you want to cook an Amberlynn loaf, you will need 20 pounds of Cheetos, uh, fat, sugar and salt, of course, one walnut and 500 pounds of aspirational gauze uh, or light. Cook slowly in a pressure cooker for about 16 years and uh, voila, one Amberlynn loaf. But here's the problem. Look. I found another shirt I'm gonna get. Um, this is actually, okay, this is embarrassing, but I think my life just consists of embarrassing things. This is a 2X and it's actually a dress, like a really short um, t-shirt dress, but I can make that a shirt for myself. Now, if someone uses these uh, cowboy sandals boots, um, we all agree that the designer and whoever is wearing them has a style problem. If you suffer from dendrophilia and get excited by trees, fearing for the future of humanity is reasonable. And when you go to buy a dress which is designed to cover someone's body and use it as a t-shirt, that's a problem. Now, this is gonna be a very complicated video if you don't know Amberlynn, so stay with me and I promise you that towards the end uh, we are gonna watch together a video of puppies playing and being cute. So please don't leave now. Now, Cheetos are to Amberlynn uh, what the vanishing caloric density is to the food industry. And this is awful because even though it takes a while to finish a pack of Cheetos, Amberlynn seems uh, not only being unable to say, okay, let's stop, I'm dieting, I shouldn't eat this stuff, but her brain, instead of sending the signal to her body to stop, tells her mouth to lie. In fact, in a video titled uh, Flaming Hot Cheetos, published in January 2017, she says, I really am trying to lose weight. I'm down 14 pounds. Um, and that's awesome. Which she, already unnaturally large, reverse reality with this quote. Hot Cheetos give me life. Then halfway at minute seven, uh, she says this. I'm trying to shove them in. Because there's so many. Should I eat like a ton at once? And two minutes later, she talks about her goal weight, uh, saying, and keep in mind, she's still eating Cheetos. Hey, Amberlynn, I love you so much. What is your ultimate goal weight? I love you too. Um, my ultimate goal weight. <laughs> I won't be reaching it after this. I'm just kidding. Um, 199 pounds, but who freaking knows if that'll ever happen? As long as I keep trying. <laughs> I love how factually she really is. Oh, my ultimate goal is to become a model and move to Paris. As long as I keep trying every Monday, I can eat whatever the fuck I want the remaining six days of the week. <laughs> okay, if you think that uh, it's enough whole bag of Cheetos is not a big deal, you should also know that is the smallest mag bang she's done. Her everyday portions are dangerously big. But let me show you. This is a plate. And this is a bowl. This is a shrimp serving at the restaurant. And these are 35 shrimps. This is what an obese person should eat. And this is Amberlynn. And she's eating it while reminding everyone of this. First comment I see is from Madison Mukbang, and she says, stop it, get some help. I'm happy that's actually the first, um, the first comment I see because, mmm, I have a dietitian, y'all. <laughs> what are you doing, you? very hungry person. Now, I'm not American, but some commentators uh, speculated, uh, they have calculated that Amberlynn could be spending up to a thousand dollars a month just for food. Now, to put it into perspective, I went on Google and with one thousand dollars, I could buy a giant inflatable unicorn, a bloody buff muff, which is pretty cool, a Donald Trump pen holder, eat for one month and still being able to prank a Reg Reynolds uh, every night at 3 a.m. in the morning. Reg Reynolds! <laughs> Now, in a recent video published a few days ago, uh, Amberlynn says that she has decided to get in touch with a weight loss place she knows about. And while she talks about it, she says... 
Hands, and for some reason, something came over me and I just said, so tell me about the surgical process. It's a very moving video and I generally feel sorry for her because I think uh, she's not as horrible as uh, many believe. Sure, she lied about being raped, uh, but uh, there's always a reason why people lie. And in her case, I don't think that trying to character assassinate uh, her ex uh, was one. I think she was just trying uh, in the wrong way to be liked. I think there's way more to that. What she does, it's uh, horrible sometimes. And accountability is important. But you cannot ask for accountability without compassion. There has to be a balance. A balance that she doesn't respect much, I understand. But if you ask for accountability every single time she makes a mistake, well you'll always have a problem with her. And unfortunately, I think that even um, surgery won't work for her. Do I think that it would be awesome if Amberlynn becomes the, rex, the next uh, Amber uh, Rashti from this to this? Of course! Do I think it will ever happen with her attitude? Not a chance. She has decided to do it on her own. Uh, very brave. But the problem is that the more weight you lose, the harder it becomes. And I think she just started uh, eating a little bit less uh, or a little bit better. Uh, just because she has lost a lot of subscribers. And how long will it last? Because Amberlynn essentially is a dangerous gastronomical centipede that keeps eating its own shit. Candidates for weight loss are generally asked to lose some weight on their own in order to receive the surgery, usually 100 to 100 pounds. And that helps to evaluate whether the patient is um, really willing to change their lives. Because a weight loss surgery only corrects the body. It doesn't fix anything else. And after watching Amberlynn for over a month, I have the impression she believes that, that a weight loss surgery will make her thin without having to make any serious lifestyle change. Sure, she's eating better now, or she might lose some weight, but she doesn't eat only because she likes it. Amberlynn's problem is way more complicated than that. Many people that reach 500 pounds have experienced uh, childhood traumas like um, uh, sexual, physical, or emotional abuse. And they all put weight as a protective mechanism or to make themselves feel better. Just like you and I, when we are depressed, we start eating Nutella. That holy trinity makes us feel better. And it's addictive. And this is another thing we should take into consideration when we talk about Amberlynn Reed. Amberlynn had a very hard childhood and uh, I personally feel sorry. I can't hate her. I'm sure she had wonderful moments, uh, but for, from what Amberlynn described in a video titled uh, An Emotional Look Into My Past, uh, Part 1 and 2, she says uh, she had a really shitty childhood. I remember as a younger girl, um, I did have a very, very hard childhood. My parents were drug addicts. Um, they abused each other neglected each other but I was actually called the golden child because I was so tan I was always on my bike I was always swimming and I was always chubby then too but I didn't care I, I, I went out and did things that little kids did um but as I got older I started realizing more so that my parents weren't like normal parents, um, their location of using drugs was in the bathroom, so every time I'd go in there I knew that when they came out they'd be a different person. It wasn't a good way to live, but I feel like it did make me stronger in a way. Any eight-year-old wouldn't have a clue, but of being a parent in a way. Um, I still remember one time in particular when my parents were on so many drugs that they were like passed out. Um, my baby brother was crying and I wasn't sure why so I went into the room of where they were and it was because his crib was by, was by a curtain and the curtain string was wrapped around his neck. I will never forget that day as long as I live. Um, even now it's emotional for me. Um, his face was purple, he was screaming and crying. And um, to put it shortly, I had to save his life. And that's awful. She's trying to change, uh, but I'm not positive about this because uh, even though she's trying to eat a little bit less, 
The main problem uh, is not being addressed. And relapsing to binging after you lost 100, 200 pounds, it's more aggressive. But why am I not positive about it? Because of this. I think the evolution of Amberlynn's double chin is the most interesting thing about this channel. Yeah. It's definitely getting a little big, you know, but it could be bigger. It definitely could be bigger, and it's not. So I think we're okay. I, I think that just sums, up, sums it up. Could be bigger, but it's not. So we're good. It could be even worse. To Amberlynn, this isn't that bad yet. And now, before answering the second question, uh, let's take a break with what I promised you earlier. Um, watching puppies playing and being cute. Enjoy. If you thought for a second that I was gonna give you puppies, you really don't know this show. Now, let's try to answer the second important question. Who does Amberlynn fuck with? From what I've seen so far, it seems that uh, no matter who she chooses, there's always a dysfunctional dynamic between uh, Amberlynn and uh, her partner or friends. If you're not able to walk and just stay home uh, posting videos on the internet, you're not leaving. You are existing. So who brings you the food? Because no one in the animal kingdom, uh, unable to walk, can gain weight instead of losing it uh, without enablers. The psychology behind enablers uh, is very complicated. But when it comes to uh, morbidly obese people, the enablers are always happy themselves. They don't want to change their own diet. They have a fetish not for fat people, let's be honest, for sick people, or want to be in a caretaker uh, role, and fear that they wouldn't be needed if their loved one uh, um, gets better. And we've seen this happening multiple times uh, with Cassidy, Crystal, Destiny. And there is a funny correlation between the number of uh, partners uh, she has and the weight she gains. Roughly every 100 pounds, she changes a partner. And then uh, there is Becky. One of the most controversial thing uh, Kentucky has given us after this hat, Baldon Fungus and Charles Manson. You might say, come on, Josh, uh, that hat can only be found uh, during the Derby. And Charles Manson uh, wasn't really born uh, in Kentucky. He was only brought up in Kentucky. Of course, not all men from Kentucky are like him. Take Nicholas Gonzalez over here. He's a 27 year old, good looking man from Kentucky working in a firehouse and the info about him uh, are in the description down below um, have a look while I roll this ad so yes uh, Becky is probably the most uh, controversial figure in Amberlin's life because while Amberlin's mobility is slowly disappearing her accessibility to junk food has increased to a level of gluttony that we haven't seen since this clip hi I like cookies What's up with that cookie? What's up, what's up with that cookie? I have Oreos, and I wanted to show you how to eat Oreos properly. Okay? Alright. Aww. Fucking cookie's broken. You ain't worth nothing no more. You gotta learn how to dunk. You gotta learn the wrist action, how to dunk. Okay, put it in, dunk. Make sure you got uh, uh, like maybe like a wristband or something like that, maybe a hair tie to like circulate the flow. You gotta twist, you can't pull. Cause look it, now you've gone and done it. Oh, I wanted that part. 
And this is sad, just like the cookie committing suicide. Amberlin is running out of time. Okay, this is gonna be the most serious part of this video. Think about my 600 pound life. Do you remember Kelly Mason? She was in an episode uh, just this year. And guess what? On the ninth month of the shooting, uh, at uh, roughly 700 pounds, she passed away. Sean Milliken, 900 pounds? She was in an episode three years ago? And guess what? He passed away. Lisa Flaming, she was in an episode last year. She was 700 pounds after the surgery, she went down to 500. And guess what? She passed away. And I could carry on, James, Robert, Henry, and all those obese people you've seen when you were seven, they are probably not alive today. And the bitter absurdity that everyone around Amberlin is missing here is that she can't walk more than two minutes and soon she will be stuck in bed. Sadly and ironically, Amberlin is turning into the only thing she's not really into, a fucking vegetable.